This video is brought to you by CyberSec at CyberSecTeam.org. This presentation will talk about wireless hacking. I've heard many people ask, how can I hack a device without sending a file or without sending a link? Of course, there are other ways how you can hack someone without sending a file or sending a link, which would include being in the same network as that person and trying out to find an exploit for a service that runs on their machine. But commonly, if it's a personal computer, there are no services that can be exploited or it's very hard to find them or they are on the newest version. As an example, you should worry if you have a Windows XP machine because the risk that you can be exploited in the same network as the attacker is very high. This presentation will talk about wireless LAN and why this is a huge threat. All attacks presented in this presentation can be carried out in a wireless LAN area. Sitting next to you but operating in the distance. Those three pictures show three different possibilities how someone could hack your any device of yours, a PC, a Mac, a smartphone, both from Apple or Android, or even a Windows phone, without actually being near you. Many people imagine that if you hack someone within your lawn, they must be near you. They must be sitting in the same building, in the same room, or next to the building. And of course, that would be a bit obvious. Or not, depending on the situation. The attacks that I'll show in this video depend on time, which means that we don't just record and listen um, to the traffic that's, um, that's on the network and intercept it and record it, but we w actually want a remote access, so we actually want to hack the devices in that network. And for this we need a bit more time, so we can't sit in the same building or in the same area having an actual wireless connection to our personal computer. This is why we do use, we use little smaller computers that aren't stationary or can be stationary, but that don't have a, a desktop or that we don't carry around and where we don't have to be. One very popular example for this is the drone right now. Many people have uh, built drones that fly around in cities, buildings, follow people, um, that hack into wireless um, networks and then hack or spy on the devices in that network. Also very clever is that many drones can um, detect which wireless networks your device is searching for. So for example, if you were at the Apple store and you went into the Apple wireless LAN, then your device knows the Apple wireless LAN. And if the attacker finds out, oh, you have saved uh, the Apple wireless LAN on your device, it then can take this access point and pretend like itself is the Apple wireless LAN. So your device will automatically connect to the drone and then the drone can hack your device. Same thing can happen with the war dog shown on the right, which is a, a picture um, of a picture from a DEF CON show where someone made something similar. Um, he made a device that listens on what other devices are searching for wireless networks and then not sure if they, he actually exploited something or, or uh, captured traffic but anyways even an animal can be or transport um, such a little device that spies or hacks the, um, the devices in a network. Uh, on the bottom is a for me, favored ver um, possibility, uh, you can have little speakers or 
little objects that usually are in rooms and you can hide the little instrument in those objects and no one will ever find out because who opens speakers and um, this little Raspberry Pi can be hidden in the speakers and send the access point or hack into an access point as we will show in this video. So of course we aren't listening, we aren't capturing traffic and spying on what passwords were entered and so on. We are hacking. We want to get a remote access using the Wi-Fi without sending uh, a link or a file directly to a person. The, the first step we will take is the intelligent browser ex exploitation. Then we will go on to the file download exploitation hacking, which doesn't mean that, again, the user actually downloads something that you sent them, but that it autom um, that uh, I'll explain it in the next slide. And the third one is social engineering, but not directly that you send them a link or the file, as I said, but that the other website does that for you, that the user trusts. So let's carry on. We will start with the intelligent browser exploitation. So what I mean with this is many users use plugins such as Java or Flash, which are known to be vulnerable and which are known to be outdated on most browsers. So, of course, there is a browser auto pattern, but um, as I have noticed, those aren't very effective because they just try out all exploits possible without knowing is there a certain plugin or is the plugin version or a browser version uh, maybe outdated or not outdated. So, what you can do, of course, is you can write your own script, which I always prefer because you shouldn't be a script kitty. And this script can find out which Java version is there and what Flash version is there. Because if you know the Java or Flash version, you can easily start an exploit which targets that Java or Flash version. For this purpose, uh, it's the first link here. If you click on it, you can let yourself know the website will generate um, a little code piece for you that automatically can detect what Java or Flash or any other plugin version there is. So I'll show that website now. So here's the website pinlady.net slash plugin detect slash download. If you get just go to plugin detect you'll find it as well. Um, so now we can select maybe we want to find out the Java of course, Java version, we want to find the Flash version. Some people have a real player as well. PDFs are very popular in exploitation as well. So let's choose those. And then we can create script. And we will have a very long but very effective script, which finds out for us what plugin versions they are. Of course, you have to try out, you have to edit the script, use the script in your own other code. Um, for example, if um, if you want to do this, you should um, program, a, create a little file where you can inject, um, w which you can inject into the traffic, meaning that this script, your script will then, first of all, check which versions are there, and then this can trigger or tell your device um, which is which, which you stationed in the LAN, um, what version is there, and then the device then says, ah, okay, I have to perform this exploit on that machine. This may sound a bit difficult, but at the end, it is not quite that difficult. One example for how you can easily do this without, or with being a script kitty, is using MITMF, uh, which provides the option Java Pawn, which is a automatically uh, an automatic script which finds a Java version and then pawns this Java versions, a uh, Java version, and then allows you to um, hack the machine. 
Of course, you can Google that. I'll not show this in this video because it's easy to Google and easy to use. YouTube, Google, both works. Just type in Mitem F, don't forget the F, and then Java Pong. Pong. The next option would be the file download exploitation hacking, which means that um, if um, a user on the network tries to download an executable or a zip file, this script automatically detects this and injects the payload binary code, which then allows you the remote access as soon as the user opens the zip file or executes the execu uh, um, execution of executable. This is very dangerous, of course, because um, if your little machine is in a network and it has all the time it wants, it can always listen and at some point some user will download an executable or a zip file and then it can insert this binary code and allow you the remote access to that person's computer. The next option is the social engineering to download the backdoor. This maybe isn't that popular, but it works. So as you have a midterm attack, a man in the middle attack, you can edit the packages using multiple tools and you can inject code such as JavaScript or HTML. Um, and the reason you, you would use this is that you can inject a JavaScript or a HTML code which opens a pop-up box or a page from well, which it pretends to be from a page that someone else trusts, let's say Facebook, and then Facebook suddenly tells the user, sorry, your browser is outdated and Facebook doesn't support outdated browsers because of security issues, which is a option you can, that you can choose from. And then the user, of course, wants to use Facebook, but he can't because always if you visit Facebook, it says, please update your browser. And then it also gives the user um, the option to download the updating executable. And as soon as you download it and execute that, of course, that's in the back door. And as soon as the back door gets executed, you have the remote access. So summing up, you can, of course, create your little device and use all of them so that your little device will then be a drone or stationary in some um, building and you and it always listens um, for any traffic that it can use if it's the downloading of an executable or zip file or if it doesn't find anything and wants to inject a social engineering script or if it sees that a user uses Java or Flash on an outdated version.